I'll begin this evening um, <clears throat> with a, a quote from Bertrand Russell, uh, who was, uh, of course, no Christian, but he's a very clever man nonetheless. And um, he wrote at one point, Many people would sooner die than think. In fact, they do. Very clever man. Many people would sooner die than think. In fact, they do. And that's the case. Many people spend their entire lives avoiding thought. Uh, when we talk about the influence of the world, we'll talk about the distractions of the world. Uh, we'll talk about amusing ourselves to death um, in entertainment and movies and so forth. Whatever, just to avoid thought, just to avoid a serious thought their whole lives. Well, how does the dictionary define thinking? Well, if we look at uh, Merriam-Webster's uh, seventh edition, which is the last edition I recommend, um, the verb to think is defined this way. The first meaning is to form or have in mind. The second meaning given by Merriam-Webster is intend or plan. The third meaning is to have an opinion or to regard as. The fourth meaning is to reflect on, to ponder. On down to meaning number nine, which they give as to subject to the processes of logical thought. To subject to the processes of logical thought. And then the intransitive verb, they define as to exercise the powers of judgment, conception, or inference, that is reason, to have the mind engaged in reflection, to meditate. And it's that form of the verb to think that we are mostly concerned with. To exercise the powers of judgment, conception, or inference, that is reason to have the mind engaged in reflection uh, or to meditate. Now the Bible uses the word think many times. I have uh, an overhead here. I'll put up on the screen. <clears throat> and uh, in the King James Version, the English word think occurs uh, 82 times uh, in Scripture. But there are many related words in Scripture, many words that are of uh, similar meaning in Scripture. Uh, understand, for example occurs 266 times in the King James Version, the English Bible. The word know occurs over 1,400 times uh, in the English Version of the King James Version of Scripture. There are other words as well used fewer times. There's the verb consider, used 98 times. Uh, the verbs uh, reckon or judge or meditate and we'll be talking about meditation in a little bit, distinguishing what uh, biblical meditation is from what uh, Eastern meditation is. And all of these words are used in, the, in a general sense of uh, meaning to make judgments, to reason, to subject to the logical processes of thought. <clears throat> now thinking, we should... Uh, uh, understand uh, if we go by this definition as a working definition uh, is not equivalent to being conscious. Thinking is not the same thing as being conscious. It's not mere awareness. It is not merely being aware. Your dog is conscious. Your dog is not a machine as the French philosopher Descartes thought he was. And your dog is conscious. The Bible, in fact, describes animals as having souls. The animals have souls, according to Scripture. They are conscious. They are aware. They have what uh, philosophers call sentience. Do 
not think. Animals do not think. They are conscious, they are aware, but they do not think. Your dog doesn't plan what he's going to do tomorrow. Your dog cannot add two and two. Your dog can't come up with a theorem in geometry. Your dog doesn't think. Now, in recent years, uh, we've heard a great deal about uh, people who allege that that's not the case. They say that animals do too think. And they stomp their foot when they say it, much like Clever Hans did. Does anybody ever recall reading about Clever Hans? Well, at the turn of the century, the first decade of the 20th century, uh, there was a German fellow who owned a horse. And uh, the horse could do arithmetic. He could add and subtract. He could multiply and divide. Uh, he could even answer questions about music. And uh, he learned all these things because his master had developed a table in which he gave a numeric equivalent of every letter in the alphabet. So he just didn't do mathematical calculations. He actually spelled out words by stomping his feet. And he earned the nickname of Clever Hans. Um, and it created quite a sensation at, in the early part of uh, this century. This, this extremely intelligent horse, obviously he didn't have the physical equipment in his throat to speak, but he could stomp his foot and answer questions. Well, today we have, I don't know of any clever Hanses, that is, horses around, but today it's mostly uh, dolphins or gorillas or apes, uh, that sort of thing, which are alleged to understand, uh, to think, to reason, uh, and to give correct answers. And uh, it's a very common theory among some zoologists uh, that these animals can do this. But animals do not think. Uh, if you look at a couple of verses of scripture, <clears throat> and we'll talk more about this later when we talk about the doctrine of man, um, read, they're very short books, read uh, Jude, for example, this evening or tomorrow morning when you have a chance, and there you will find a description of animals. And uh, in the English versions, it's usually translated as brute animals. Brute animals. The Greek behind that English word brute means without speech or without reason. That's what the Greek is behind that word brute. Without speech or without logic. Elogia without speech or without reason. And there are many other verses in Scripture that teach the same thing, but uh, read, uh, read Jude and you'll see that. Um, but returning to human beings, uh, thinking is not daydreaming. Perhaps some of you are daydreaming already. Uh, that's an uh, occupational hazard of being a teacher, is to have your, your listeners daydream. And when you're daydreaming, you're not thinking. You may be uh, uh, imagining things. You may be remembering things. You may be wishing things. But you're not planning. You're not calculating. You're not subjecting your thoughts to logical processes. You're not thinking. You're just aware. And you have an active imagination. And you're dreaming. You're daydreaming in this case. Uh, not thinking. Uh, thinking involves understanding. It involves understanding. There's a, uh, if I'm blocking your way here, just make hand motions or something and I'll get out of the way. Um, you've probably seen the, uh, what is it, the far side cartoon of what your dog hears when you're talking to him. Blah, 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 Fido, blah, 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 blah. That's what the dog hears. Well, the dog doesn't even hear that much. Uh, the dog hears a noise that he recognizes. 
And that noise may happen to be Rover or Fido or something. But he doesn't understand. He doesn't have a concept of himself to begin with. He doesn't have a concept of the idea of name, that things have names. Uh, he doesn't rise to the level of understanding. He hears a noise that he's heard before, and he knows that if he does certain things when he hears that noise, like wag his tail or come running or whatever it might be, uh, he's going to be patted on the head or given a treat or something of that sort. 